Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Lewis, Lewis Speaks 2023. And today I just want to take a moment to tell my story. I think a lot of us have a very valuable story that can help other people that are struggling with certain things. And it's important that we share our story with the intention of healing other people. And that's my intention by sharing my story. You know, I grew up in a single parent household. I was raised by a single mom. My father left when I was three. Um, he was a heroin addict. He struggled with addiction for pretty much all his life. Um, he would make guest appearances in and out of my life, um, usually at critical periods of my life when I was learning how to tie my shoe. I was learning how to ride a bike. He would show up at these times. He would kiss me on my cheek, tell me that he loves me, and then just disappear into the night. Um, oftentimes he would make promises to come and see me. Throughout my childhood, those promises never came to fruition. He never was a man of his word. And that only left me with questions. That left me with feelings of inadequacy. You know, why was I not good enough for my father to stay in the picture? I didn't have the language or even realize at the time that it had nothing to do with me. It was more so about his addiction, but usually children, when they're younger, they personalize things. They operate under these personal fables that everything is their fault. And so I blame myself for his disappearance. Couple that with oftentimes I would be in the bedroom you know, within earshot of the women in the living room who were oftentimes just imparting their experience, trying to get healing within their sister circles. You know, my mother, my sister, my grandmother, my grandmother's friends, they would all sit in the living room and they would just kind of engage in these testimonials where they male bashed. And the thing about it is I cannot discount their experience as women because they definitely had a very, very challenging time with the men in their lives. I can't discount that. At the same time, for a young man, a young man growing up, hearing that, internalizing that, it's dangerous. You know, it's very dangerous and not having another positive male influence to offset that. All my uncles at the time were either pimping women, doing drugs, selling drugs or in jail. So it's like I didn't have a positive male role model growing up. And it was it was almost as if my male identity was hijacked. It was almost as if the masculinity was manipulated out of me by the women that tried to train me to be the man of their dreams as opposed to the man that I needed to be. You know, I was always raised to be their perfect man, their perfect little man. I was always their perfect little man and I had to be the man of the house. I had to be what my father wasn't. I often was a surrogate husband to my mother, a surrogate partner for my grandmother. You know, these were lonely women, women that grew up and <clears throat> had to go without the benefit of a partner. And so I can only imagine what it was like for them. And being the only boy child in the house, I was thrust into that role. And unbeknownst to me at the time, I didn't know how that would affect how I perceived masculinity. I saw masculinity as inconsistent. I saw it as abusive. I saw it as destructive. I saw it as hurtful. I saw it as an impediment to growth and intrusion. I saw masculinity as an intrusion upon women. And I didn't want to hurt them any more than they have already been hurt. So I became this person. I created this identity that excluded my own masculinity. I didn't see the beauty in my masculinity. I only saw how it hurt other women, how it damaged them, how it left them alone to raise children by themselves. That's all I saw. And so I learned how to reject 
my masculine identity. But at the same time, what was brewing inside of me was a father hunger, a hunger to understand men, a hunger to be close to them, a hunger to understand myself. You know, because honestly, your father, he is your first introduction into masculinity. He is your first real male friend. You know, he teaches you how to be a man. He teaches you the mechanics of masculinity. And I did not have that. You know, I had a mother who was doing her best to raise both my sister and I single-handedly. She did not ask to be a single mom. She also was thrust into this role. And so her coping mechanism included trying to raise me to be anything else other than the men who have hurt her. She didn't want me like those men. She wanted me to be like a positive male fantasy, her positive male fantasy, you know? And I was groomed to be that. I was groomed to be the golden child, the golden boy by my grandmother. My grandmother, she oftentimes was a strict disciplinarian. You know, anything that kind of resembled male agency, male authority, it, it was a trigger for her because she was also abused by men who used to beat her, who used to mistreat her, cheat on her. So she had her own wounding that she was trying to navigate. And this is why if there's any fathers out there listening to this, please, please stay in your son's lives. You know, if you don't get along with the mothers, if you don't like what they're doing or you just are not compatible, don't just leave the male children behind because when you leave these children behind, you leave them to deal with all the wounding, all the, the trauma, you know, that your absence leaves behind. When you disappear and you leave your son, he's a hostage, he's, it's a hostage situation, you know? You leave him alone to deal with all of that. Now, he is a constant reminder of you. So all the anger and the frustration that the mother might feel towards the father, that is redirected into the son. It's redirected all into the son. So the son becomes a trauma container. You know, he becomes a container for these negative feelings, you know, and the son, he's young. He don't have the language to understand. He doesn't know what a trauma container is. All he knows is that he feels alone. He feels burdened, heavy inside. Burdened by the expectation of women with no positive male influence to help offset that. Many days, I got to be honest, many days, I wish that my father would have came back for me and said, you know something, you're not going to treat my son like this. Come on, son, we out of here. Let me show you the beauty of what being a man really means. That was that would have been beautiful for me. But I didn't have that. You know, so many days I was just I remember myself walking the streets by myself and just wishing that anybody, anybody would kidnap me. If somebody would, would have asked me to get in their car, I would have. I would have. I would have probably been one of those missing children that you have you seen constantly on the news, on the back of milk cartons. I would have been that child because I, I just want to escape. I love my mother. I love my sister. I love them. I just wanted escape at the time because I was just so alone. I felt so isolated, you know, not having another male. You know, even growing up, the kids called me faggot, sissy. You know, they called me gay. They called me all these names that were derogatory at the time. And it really, really made me question my male identity so much so. You know, I had a, a, a broken male identity, if you want to know the truth. I was always searching. And at the same time, I had this hunger, this curiosity about men. Who are men? Who are they? What do they do? What do they like? What do they enjoy? I still had these questions in my head. 
And I wasn't getting the answers from these so-called friends and associates because they were too busy trying to compete. They were very competitive. And so I wasn't getting these answers. I wasn't getting my need for closeness and affection and tenderness answered. And so when you combine all these factors, right, it leads you down a road that can either take you to hypermasculinity, which is like a compensatory masculinity. A lot of young boys are out here trying to prove that they're men, so they're engaging in all these crazy acts like having sex with multiple women, going out there fighting, going out there engaging in juvenile antics and truancy, you know? They're out there trying to find their male identity, so that's one road. Or you take the road to homosexuality, which is you're sleeping around with men trying to find daddy. You're trying to find daddy in so many strange beds. And I see so many gay men doing that. So many lost gay men that have strained relationships with their fathers or have no relationship with their father whatsoever. They're out there trying to figure it out. They're out there trying to find daddy in these men and all they're doing is being re-traumatized over and over and over again. You know, having a positive male role model in your life is a protective factor. And so many young boys are born into a bunch of risk factors. They're born into this myriad of risk factors that they have to try and navigate and fight up against. And my thing is, is born, being born already in the red, being born already with deficits, makes your life hard. It makes your life challenging. And these boys, you know something, they're not born with fathers. They're not born knowing healthy male identity and what that means. What does that mean? What does it mean to be a real man? What does it mean to know myself as a man? And so some boys go down the road of sleeping with other men, getting into relationships with other men. And the funny thing is, here you have men who don't have a clue of what it means to be a man of what it means to love a man, getting with other men who don't have a clue about what it means to love a man and what it means to be a man. And so what ends up happening, this clash, people trying to figure it out and they're just bumping into each other, cutting each other, mutilating each other to the point where you just leave these relationships emotionally shipwrecked, scarred, you leave these relationships feeling just Confused, even more confused than when you first started. And so I feel for our young boys and men out there who don't have those positive male role models. And that's why I'm making this video. I'm making this video because I know what it's like to feel lost, to feel confused, to not know and feel comfortable inside your male identity. You know, to always try to figure out what it means to be a man. Even to this day, I really don't have any men that I admire. I don't have any men that I really admire. You know, growing up, my mother said, look at Bill Cosby. <laughs> well, mom, did you see what happened? Like, <laughs> that's the thing. She said, look at Bill Cosby. Look at the, the Huxtables. You know, look at those families, the Winslows on Family Matters. And I found it very difficult to connect with those men because they were fictional. They were characters. I didn't know how men surmount their struggles. All I knew was that men leave. That's how I, I, I was conditioned to believe. Yeah, that was what I was conditioned to believe. When situations get hard, men leave. All the men in my life left, you know, in one form or another. So all I knew was that men leave. And so even with these sitcoms, these sitcoms are 30 minutes. I had 30 minutes of a father figure, and then they would leave. Then you grow up in these relationships that you get into with other men, and they don't stay. You know, they play with your body for a couple of months, and then they leave. So here you go once again, out there chasing after these men with questions. Wondering. And truth be told, even if you were to find a man that would stay, you would not be comfortable 
that would be very uncomfortable for you because you're so used to men leaving. So should a man decide to stay and love you, stay and stick around? You're uncomfortable with that. You know, because you were taught growing up that you were worthless by the men in your life. They taught you that you were worthless. You were not worth staying for. You were not worth fighting for. That's how you interpreted that. Of course, that, that's not the most accurate interpretation at all. Because once again, their addictions, their issues, their wounding had nothing to do with you. But as a child, you don't know that. You don't know that. All you know is that my father was not there for me. I must have done something bad. I must not have been worth anything for him to leave. That's the message that keeps on replaying over and over in your head. And so you grow up looking for men who will make you feel worthless. You grow up looking for men who will make you feel like you are not worth anything because it's a Freudian thing. You know, Freud has this concept called repetition compulsion where he posits that we oftentimes try to set up situations from our past as a way to negotiate them in our present. You know, we're hoping for a different outcome. And so we go back and we chase after these shadows of our past, set them up in our lives, hoping to negotiate a better outcome. But the reality is, it's the same outcome because we have the same wounding. We have the same unhealed wounds deep within us. And that's why it's essential, essential that you have to do your father wound work. You have to do the father wound work. You have to go about healing that wound, that deep hole in your soul. You have to definitely figure it out because honestly, when you figure that part out and you start to really understand your masculinity, your masculinity is power. Your masculinity is strength. It's beautiful. You have a new appreciation for your masculinity. You know? Like you feel good inside your skin when you do that work and you realize the benefits because if you grew up without a man teaching you the benefits of what being a man really meant, you're going to walk around this earth confused. Your identity is going to be like, what? What is this? What is this? What is it? That's why there's so many confused young men. You know, a lot of young men, they lost their fathers to the crack epidemic, you know, back in the late 80s, early 90s. They were fathers were gone. Fathers were on the pipe. Fathers were incarcerated. You know? The homes were predominantly run by single female headed households. They were there was no man in the house. And that lopsided family that created an imbalance, you know, because I personally feel that women are responsible for raising children, but not necessarily for disciplining children. That's the father's job, you know? Mothers provide the nurturance, the love, the care and concern. Fathers provide the structure, the discipline, the love, the tenderness. You know, everybody has their part to play. And so when that father is missing from the home, the mother's out here raising these children, but not disciplining them, not offering structure, trying her best to deal with her own wounding. She's not only having to deal with her psychological wounds that she grew up with from her caretakers, she also now has to deal with the wound of being a single mother, raising children single-handedly when she didn't sign on for that. She didn't sign on for that role. And so I feel real, I feel real, I wouldn't say sorry for, but I have an empathy. I have an empathy for single mothers because I watched my single mother grow up and the struggles that she faced, trying to not only find herself, but also trying to raise two children by herself. You know? I have an empathy also for fathers who are trying their best, you know? But not as much as single mothers. And that was because of my own lens, the lens that I operate from. You know, but I know it's hard being a man trust. As a man who's now grown, I see a lot of things, especially for black men out in this world. Let me tell you something. <laughs> for black men, it's tough. 
were only valuable in the bedroom and in coffins. And if you are a black gay man, <laughs> the bedroom and the coffin look one and the same. So it's just like, it's tough out here. It's tough. But my identity, you know, I realize that I can't base my identity off my sexuality because it's not it. I want to base my identity off of my spirituality. You know, I don't want to base it on my sexuality because quite frankly, it's not leading me to good places. You know, gay life is tough. I'm here to tell you, <laughs> gay life is hard. It's hard. And what makes it hard is that you continue to deal with wounded men that just want to break you to pieces. They just want to break you to pieces to see how much you can break. It's, it's for their own sport, their own entertainment. The shattered pieces of your broken heart are just for their entertainment. And you get tired of always breaking apart, gluing yourself back together, breaking apart, gluing yourself back together. How many pieces do you have to be in before there are no pieces left? So I just feel this. I feel like I... I definitely understand. I understand gay men. I understand their struggles. I understand it all. I understand having a lost male identity. I understand that. But let me tell you something. This ain't it. This is this ain't it. It ain't it. It ain't it. So me, I'm trying to once again pick up what pieces <laughs> I got left. Try to glue them back together. I'm trying my best to figure it out, you know? But I made this video because I just want you to know I know what it's like. I know what it's like. And like I said, if I could take away the pain of these young men, I would. I would. But once again, at the same time, I wouldn't. Because this is their journey. This is what they have to go through in order to begin to reconstruct their broken identities. This is what they need to go through in order to put the pieces back together and become whole again. This is what they need. So hopefully this video will be an invitation for that journey, for that healing journey, you know? And if not right now, you have to ask yourself when, because don't wait before it's too late and you're sitting up there in pieces that you can't even put back together again. Don't wait. Find out now. I hope this video is helpful. I really do. I love you all. Just know that I love you all. And I, I, I know what you're going through. Trust and believe. And I'm definitely here with you. We're fighting together. You have a battle buddy in me. Trust and believe. So I wish you a wonderful, wonderful 2023 and a wonderful healing journey. Let's take this journey together. Peace, y'all.